welcome to another Authentic Health Podcast. I'm your host, Lacey, and today I have Kelly B with me. Who am I? Irrelevant. da da oh! <laughs> No, I'm your sister. That was mean. Okay, I got Kelly here. She's my sister. If you're watching mm-hmm. on YouTube, thank you. You should um, like it and subscribe it. Um, subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like watching podcasts. Do you watch podcasts? Of course I do. Do you actually? Yeah, of course. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, if you like my setup, <laughs> let me know. Found that chair in the guest bedroom. It's literally like my old whatever chair. This is Stark Bud's chair. There's but- a lot of dog hair on it. Why are you going to throw me under the bus like that? Sorry. That's private information. (laughs) There really is a lot of that. You said that Stark's chair. It's Stark Buddy's chair. If anyone knows Stark, they know that he is full of hair. (laughs) Oh my god. This is going to go great. Okay, I'm firing you on the <laughs> podcast. Yes, my dog has a lot of hair. It is a northern Inuit. That would mm-hmm. make sense. So this is Stark Bud's chair. I had to put a blanket over him because he's just, he's so supportive of me. And he has a permanent spot in my office. Yeah. And he's just an office mate. Okay. Not super productive. Okay, anyways, um, what are we talking about today? We're, We're talking about emotional eating. Yeah, so Kelly and I just did a... Um, Workshop? Yes. Workshop with some of our old faculty and staff at the high school we went to. Mm-hmm. Um, can't believe they asked us to come I back. <laughs> we must have been good kids growing I guess. up. Like, if they want us to come back. Also, it's crazy that it's our old teachers. Yeah, it's cool. And, like, our old teachers, they, they've got to feel good, like, seeing their students come back actually, like, doing things with their lives, so. you know? But it's so crazy because it's, like, when you're growing up, and you have teachers, you view, at least we do, we viewed our teachers as, like, mm-hmm. higher, you know, like, we, we looked up to them. We still do, but it now we're on the same level. Yeah, it's cool. Like, we're both adults. It's a weird thing. It is kind of weird. Yeah, so, it walked, was very fun. walked the halls of our good high school yes. men. Smells the exact same. Yeah, I found my locker. <laughs> All the men's. So, anyways, we were talking about emotional eating, yeah. um, because stress and... Just whether it's mental, physical, okay, don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> this is going great. My mind is stressed. <laughs> no, no, emotional eating yeah. is physical and mental. That's what I was getting at. Right. So as a dietitian, I talk a lot about the kind of physical side, what's going on in the body, cortisol, all the things. And Kelly? I talk about the mental health side of things. So I'm in... Because you're local. I was... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm so obsessed with mental health is because I'm crazy. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So um, I was just like, hey, you want to come record a podcast because I think that's a fantastic topic. Mm-hmm. And now we're here. Now we're here. So let's talk about it. Okay. So we're going to dive in. Do you want to read the quiz to them or should we not? Should we not worry about the quiz? No. If they want the quiz, I guess just message us. Okay, so there is a quiz if you want to take it. It kind of is just yes or no answers. And it basically just, it kind of gives a good idea of if you use food as a coping mechanism or have emotional eating struggles. And I was going to say, you brought up a really good point at the um, workshop. Of course I did. (sighs) Okay, relax. (laughs) If you mark no to some of these things sometimes yeah that also well I don't know these these questions specifically but so someone like me when I'm stressed I don't eat at all it's like I call that emotional starving which is not good also um and so like this quiz you what I was going to say is you brought up a good point that like there's that other side to it too Mm -hmm. sometimes people emotionally eat a lot or there's people like me who emotionally don't eat Mm -hmm. at all Um, and both are not good for sure so if you want that let us know Mm -hmm. but I'm going to dive into what is actually happening I feel like no right I was gonna say should we do something fun but is that at the end no I think we should start with fun fun is great I'm all about fun okay Okay, you want to do some questions? Yeah, sure. Okay, so this is... I don't know, I just don't, like, want to start yet. I don't either. Also, when we did the workshop, I... It's just, like, really hard to listen to all the sciencey stuff of things, so <gasps> there's a way to make it a little bit more exciting. You don't like the sciencey part? I love science for myself. Normal people, though, 
It might be a little difficult. Okay. So maybe if there's a way you can make that a little more fun. But for right now, let's do some fun questions. Okay. okay rapid fire. Ready? Go. Name an onomatopoeia. <laughs> That's literally a question like yeah, onomatopoeia. Remember you just said that. I know I said it, but I don't know if I know the definition. I don't know. Either. Well, Wait, I think it's like, um, it, it's like a play on letters, right? Like multiple letters. I have no idea. I don't either. But I just, th- I just think this is funny because you literally Wait, just Wait, oh my gosh, thing. I feel so silly. How do I not know what that is? Onomatopoeia. Someone tell us what onomatopoeia means. No, like, I feel like I know what it means. I have no idea. I think it's like... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Describe your style in one word. Go. Comfy. Great. I love that you, like, felt like you had to do that really fast. Like, something bad was going to happen. I mean, I feel like my style kind of changes. Sometimes I, I don't know. Most of the time I'm an active wear. Okay, wait. I have what? a funny question. What? Name my style in one second. Go. Or in one word. Simple. Love that. Yeah. I feel like you have your staple pieces. and uh, No, I have like five articles of clothing That's that, not I, bad thing. that I rotate through. That's no. I definitely don't um, overshop. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> How often do you floss? Be honest. <gasps> daily. 100% daily. That's annoying. But it's I because I have say. Invisalign now. True. My fear of, like, having gross teeth is, like, bad. I know. Mm-hmm. I know. Your teeth, like, that's, your eyes and your teeth, in my opinion, are the first things that people see. Well, I'm not even talking about, like, aesthetically. Like, the thought of getting a cavity. Because oh. Invisalign, it, it could make you get yeah. cavities pretty easily. Mm-hmm. So I've been super, oh, I'm addicted to flossing. Good and you. And you get those little handheld ones, not not the string. Like, get the oh, little handheld. Oh, obviously, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With the little pick at the oh, end. Oh, I'm obsessed. Do I even bring it on road trip. No, I don't. Oh my god, you should. It's a game changer. Okay. It's actually like really gross how my teeth, so I just started using an electric toothbrush, and it's really gross thinking about what my teeth felt like before mm. using the electric toothbrush. Okay. Now they feel like, I'm not kidding, they feel like brand new teeth. Well, your teeth fell out. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, should I tell them about that? Is that I funny? don't care. Okay. So last night, I literally, I forget that there's a thing here too. Oh, yeah. Last night, I had a dream that all of my teeth fell out. And the <laughs> annoying thing about this is that happens a lot. Like this dream happens often. So anyone. So we think it means something. Well, I was going to say, if anyone listening is a dream analysis expert, please like message us because I need to know. But people are telling me all these different things. They're telling me it's a lack of control or I feel like. There's a lack of control in my life. You are life. kind of a control freak, so that 100%. makes sense. Well, and think of my career. My entire career is about, is working with people who are in situations where they feel out of control. Mm-hmm. Like that's just, that's mental health at its mm-hmm. core, you know? I feel like that's what I do every day. Um, and then the travel stuff, too. Yeah, so you're out of control. I think so. Okay. And then there's some other things. Someone said that something bad's going to happen. Hmm. Wish you luck. <laughs> I know. Okay, one more question, then I guess we could talk about that stuff. Um, that's kind of fun. Let's just do this. Okay. I don't... Whatever. <laughs> What's your favorite board game? Um... This must be fast. Honestly, I was gonna say Catan. Catan? Catan. Whatever. What are you saying? It's silly. It's because I crushed all of you guys you last did time. Not, we worked yes, together. Yes, I did. Don't throw me... We worked together. The only reason you won is because we partnered and worked together. I mean, it definitely helped. And then the boys got mad because we didn't partner with them. Well, they suck. I know. Okay. That was the last question. Why don't you ask me a question? You didn't ask me any. Okay. I can't think of questions off the top of my head. I know. Um, finish the phrase. The way to my heart is? Book a trip. <laughs> oh, yeah. Duh. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just really fast. You have to pick it fast. These kind of suck. Well, I picked the good ones then. Um... If you can be transformed into an animal, which one would you choose? Dolphin. Oh, I do love dolphins. I know. Oh, that's another, as you're looking for a question, that's another dream I have reoccurring is that we have pet dolphins and they live in mom and dad's pool. Oh, yeah. I've heard you say that. Which one. is actually really sad. But the thing with that is, it's like a series. So they're like episodes and Aww. they pick up. So like. Yeah, my dreams definitely do that. Yeah. Yeah. They pick up from the last one. Uh-huh. For sure. What's your favorite, oop, 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 oop. what's your go-to lazy dinner? Anything DoorDash. Like, we DoorDash all the time. How much money do you spend on DoorDash? Oh, a lot. It's not good. It's a personal problem. We don't need to talk about that. Do you do it multiple times? A week? Yeah, probably. Oh, my gosh. But you have to know, like, we don't really grocery shop. Grocery shop. We do what we grocery we shop. It's not that funny. Yes, it is. 
Why are you laughing? Because. Kelly. You just did that so quickly. Name an onomatopoeia. I don't freaking know what that means. I'm going to Google it. What, what is does onomatopoeia an... mean? I cannot type. What? Well, you don't know how phone... to spell it. Yes, I do. Just copy and paste I it. Know my... <laughs> I know mine. Onomatopoeia. I know mine. Okay. An onomatopoeia is the use or creation of a word that phonetic Fanatically. No. <laughs> Phonetically. <laughs> I was so confident. It's fanatically. <laughs> no, it's not. I was so fanatically. Confident. Imitates, resembles, or suggests a sound that it describes. What? Like oh, a... oink. What? <laughs> what? Like quack? Rar. Oh, because a lot. Chirp. Like... So is it a verb? I gotta be honest. That is not what I would have. thought. I thought it was like Red Rocket thought... Robbie. <laughs> Do you know what a red rocket is? Yes! <laughs> I don't know why that came to my head. I'm crying. <laughs> this, this is well, the best podcast in the whole world. I do not know why. Oh. I, I thought that's a <laughs> Okay, another example. Um, candy Crush Cane. Okay. That's just three words that start with the same word. I kind of thought that's what it was. I'm literally crying. That was what did fire. you think it was? I thought it was like more of like acronyms. Like what? I, uh, I don't know. Like MTV? <laughs> for music television but television is one word so it shouldn't just be empty <laughs> so, i think i think that's what it stands for music television or isn't mtv music video so shouldn't it be mvp oh mvt maybe it's music television videos <laughs> yeah, maybe. no way no way does it stand for music television <laughs> Google it. Wait, Kelly, that's like that's like three things like like orange apple banana. <laughs> like music, T TV, television, and videos are like three separate. <laughs> Alright. Well, what's the uh what's the um oh T R O. What does T R L stand for? The real life. Oh shit, yeah. Is it? Yeah, probably. T No, I thought T R L I thought T R L was um Technology readiness level. <laughs> it's not the real life. Okay. Um, oh, Total Request Live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the music. You know, like people request. Well, what's. Oh, that's TLC. What's TLC? The Learning Channel. I no, learned. Uh-huh. Yes, huh? I learned that. Uh, okay. I literally learned that very recently. Okay, cool. Well, didn't know that that's what onomatopoeia meant. <laughs> That's so funny. That really didn't live up to the hype. I know. I really thought it was something. Meow. That's onomatopoeia. Also, who created the word? Like, oh, I think that thing should be called onomatopoeia. Okay, but how is... Okay, so I know meow is the sound, how it's spelled, but how is lacy not spelled how it's sound? No, 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 no. Because a meow is a sound. Lacy is a name. Do you get what I'm saying? I mean, yes, but like... Like, rar wait. is... That is a real life sound. No, but even this said... Oh, I guess the clock made a TikTok. Tick. Why do you think TikTok is called TikTok? I don't know. I literally was just thinking about that when you said that. Like, if a, if a clock goes TikTok... Where the heck did TikTok that come from? Do you think it has... What if it's some big scheme like the Hunger Games, how it was yes. a clock? Yes, and she, do you, did you see that meme the other day? I swear this just came out because of the whole TikTok thing. Mm. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. That was gross. But it <laughs> was um, in the Hunger Games movie. Yeah. The, the girl's literally saying TikTok. Yeah. TikTok. TikTok. It's really creepy. That, that was your story? Yeah. 
But that's my story. I thought there was going to be, like, a big, long, no. like, this girl, like, put everything together, and TikTok is, like, this big conspiracy, and... No. Ah. We're just, just, we're just that. over that. All right. Shall we dive in? Yeah. Whenever I do this podcast, one of my favorite podcasts is the morning... Excuse me, what? The Morning Toast. Do you listen yeah. to them? I'm obsessed. I love them. I think they're absolutely hilarious, and whenever I do this podcast... You wish you were them. I almost said TikTok. Oh, my goodness. No, I don't wish I was them. I like me, okay. and I like them, as them. But A, I always want to go, good morning. Oh, that's what they do? Clearly, you don't listen or watch it, because they do it every time they no, start. No, really. The only time I listen to it is when I'm with you and we're traveling. Yeah, but you literally just said that you do, so you lied to me. No, I know who they are. I know what it is. Mm, but I don't okay. watch it, like, regularly. And then they also, like, when they're about to dive in, she goes, these are the fast five stories that you need to know. You need to come up with a little catchphrase like that. All my podcasts are different. They, ha- are they you have a very podcast because I think I you know. are. My teeth feel weird. My um, I don't have my Invisalign in. Eek. I'm naughty. So that's your normal teeth. Yeah, but they have the little bump things on them. I know. Do those come off ever? Or are you gonna have them for the rest of your life? Do you really think you're gonna have them for the rest of my life? No. No. Um, that is smart. Yeah, but my podcast isn't um like as, like they have a set like. Five stories, pop culture, every single day. Got it. What's mine? I'm all over the place. Do whatever the hell you want. But I still think you should have some kind of fun, catchy line or something. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why you were staring at me for so long. <laughs> I was thinking about something. What can That's like? what you came up with? Yeah, why not? No. Hey, this is Lacey with Beth and Akel. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> That's embarrassing. I need to leave. Okay. All right, let me okay. know what my tagline. No, is it tagline? Well, a tap. No, it's probably it's probably like a catchphrase. Just something fun. Usually I go, hey, hey, hey. No, what do I do? I don't. I know I don't. I go, <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad at No. You remember that? Yes, I remember hey, that. Hey, hey, hey. Um, no, I think I go, hello, hello. That's what I go. I On go, your stories, you always say, hey, friends. You literally start every story. Is like that this. okay? Hey friends. No, it's fine, but that's your story tagline. So should I go, hey friends, welcome? Sure. But I go, hello, hello. Ugh, that sounds gross. <gasps> I like, you like hey it. friends. I go, hello, hello. Do I? That doesn't sound right now. No, I don't think you. Hey everyone, welcome. I think I said, hey everyone. Okay. Sounds boring. I like, hey friends. I think you should do that. Hey friends. That's exactly how you start your stories. Hey, friend. All right, now. Hey, Jude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why so sad? That sounded great. Is that the words? I don't know. I think I'm a better singer than I actually, like, play on, you know? I sound great in the car. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Hey, Jude. <laughs> Were you really trying there? No. What's the next line? I don't know. Hey, Jude. Why are you so sad? Sad. Make you feel better. Wait. What's that song? Um. And you... <laughs> whatever. Okay. I'm, how... I'm just over here. I don't know. Okay. We're going to talk about emotional eating now. Okay. Now that we have all of our emotions out. We do. Okay. So, basically, I'm going to talk about how stress affects cortisol and eating patterns. Cortisol is going to be our main driver. I have an idea. What? Let's make this more entertaining. I'm going to tell you my problems. You're going to tell me how to fix it in relation to that. Okay. It's a lot more entertaining than listening to the numbers and the words. I literally don't have any numbers. You do on the paper. You didn't say them, but... Oh, just five tips? I think that's great. No, that's fine that they have the actual beer. Okay, so (laughs) I get a crash in the afternoon. I'm trying to think of some of the things we talked about today. So in the afternoon, I get a crash. Do you actually or are you lying to us? No, 100% I do. Okay. Oh my God, this is real life. It's crazy because I do think it's important to share this. You're better at this stuff than me, but I think just because we share about these things doesn't mean we're perfect with them. No. Like, we can know the knowledge and still struggle with them ourselves. Well, for sure. <clears throat> I just think that's important to say. But, okay. 100%. So, the afternoon crash totally happens. Why is that happening in my body? Okay. So, there's a few things. Um, let's talk about making sure you're eating enough throughout the day. Great. Okay? 
So one of the main topics that I talk about with my clients and recommend, especially in women, is making sure you're getting enough protein. Mm -hmm. Okay. So every single meal and snack, basically if you put together a meal or like you're grabbing something, make sure it has a protein source. So protein is going to be the slower digesting out of our three macronutrients. Do you know the three macronutrients? Protein, carbs, something else. Do you really not know? I really have no idea. What? Do this you listen to any of my stuff? <laughs> this is the thing. Normal people don't know these things. I know. That's why I do this kind I of know, stuff. I know. So I think you need to always assume that people don't know. No, I do, I do. But I'm asking you. You don't no. listen to any of my stuff? Just because I listen to them doesn't mean I'm going to... Fat. Oh, okay. And what's the third one? Uh, you, oh, carbs, yeah. protein, and... Okay. Yeah. Oh, Three. good. I thought you were going to say carbs. Macronutrients means it gives us calories. Okay. Macronutrients. Micronutrients do not give us calories, but they are equally, if honestly, not more important. What so are what those? are micronutrients? I don't know. I don't know what's left. Those are... <laughs> <laughs> These, they're Sugar? Going... No! They're... Obviously, I'm kidding. I don't know what's left. They're a completely different category. It's your, like, vitamins, minerals. Oh. So, like, your magnesium, your Bs, Ds. That's so you could just take pills for those. I mean, for sure. But, um... We want to get them in food. I know. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Okay. Um, so, protein. Okay? Got to have it every single meal and snack. So, if you're crashing in the afternoon, one thing that I would suggest looking at is when was the last time you ate. Okay. Okay? If you're going too long, your body can pump all this blood sugar and glucose and all the things out into the blood. And then insulin will come and pull it all into the blood or into the muscles and organs and everything, and so your blood just will plummet with blood sugar. So you feel kind of shaky, achy, irritable, get that kind of like uneasy feeling, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So most people feel it in the afternoon because their lunch did not suffice them enough to handle that, or they just need a snack. Okay. Most of the time it's a blood sugar drop, for sure. Okay. Okay? Um, Or cortisol issues, for sure, which we will dive into. So... Some things, definitely make sure you're eating enough protein and make sure you're eating every few hours. I really like that four-ish hour, give or take. Okay. Okay? So look back when was the last time you've eaten, add in a snack. Probably a long time ago. Yeah. That's my problem. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this, but. Yeah. Lack of eating. Yeah. So lack of eating definitely is going to hurt cortisol for sure. And since we are on the topic of stress and emotional eating, Cortisol is going to be your number one kind of effector. effector? Is that the right word? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because when you get stressed, you're... What's that word? Your number one... I was going to say plantive, but that's not right. Contributor? No. What's a person like a bad guy? Your number one... Villain. Sure. Whatever. Okay. No, but cortisol is good for us, too. You just don't want too much. Well, of course. And if you have high levels of cortisol for long periods of time, that creates chronic stress. <clears throat> yeah. So actually, when we were doing this presentation, we pulled some um, research. And for most people, short-term stress or a very, like, just quick stressor will actually suppress your hunger. So if you ever go out throughout the day when you're stressed, like us, mm-hmm. we don't eat. So mm-hmm. if I have a work like a stressful meeting coming up, I don't think to eat. Like my Correct. hunger gets suppressed, so does yours. 100%. But long term, so chronic stress, so that could be chronically elevated cortisol or completely blunted cortisol where your adrenals are completely shot. Um, chronic stress can actually do the opposite where your body will start seeking out more palatable foods, so more um, fat dense and carbohydrate dense. And actually, the hormone cortisol over time can actually deplete your kind of drive to want protein. Yeah, like you said, there's when I am stressed, the absolute last thing that I want to eat is protein. For sure. Like, I'm, like, I'm not trying to go grab a chicken breast. Mm-hmm. Like, I want chips. Yeah, and that totally makes sense. I know. Well, I'm not saying that's a good thing, but that is what yeah. is happening. Yeah, for sure. So we talked about our comfort foods and... All of that. Yeah. <laughs> the emotions behind all that as well. Mm-hmm. So we really want to make sure that we're getting to the root cause of that stress and really focus on protecting our adrenals and helping that cortisol so that you don't let your body get to that point of Correct. chronic. So being very, very proactive. Well, and I'll just throw in my part of this as well. 
on that topic. Yeah. So that's what I was talking about is mental health maintenance. And so the idea is that you are, well, there's a couple things. Okay. So when you are experiencing the stress or the just heightened emotions, it's really important to stop and figure out what that emotion is and why you're experiencing it. Because I always say like, we can't fix something that we don't know about. Like we can't, we can't solve a problem if you don't even know the problem in the first place. Mm-hmm. So step one is we got to figure out what the problem is. we got to figure out what we're feeling and why we're feeling it. And when Okay, you- so I figured out I have a ton of emails that's making me stress. Figured it out. Okay, so then like I shared today, you can do an ex- exercise called the five whys. Figuring out why that stresses you out. What is that root? We call it like a core feeling, core belief, different ways. So like the together. emails aren't stressing me out? There's something else? It could be. So, like, I mean, it, it might just be as simple as that. The emails are stressing you out. But I do think it's important to say why. Why is that stressing you out? Why is that something that is causing stress? Okay. Is, and then here, here's some underlying. You ask yourself why. Well, it could mean because I feel overwhelmed. Well, why do you feel overwhelmed? Well, it, and then you start digging down. It could be, well, because I feel I'm not working hard enough. Or I feel like I'm not professional if I'm not responding to my emails quick okay, enough. Okay, so how do you fix those things? Well, so step one, we have to go down to the that core belief. So... I just want to like, I guess, preface this again. So the the overarching thing is the email is causing stress, but it's not usually the email itself. There's usually a belief attached to that. So it's like, again, what I was saying, when you go deep down and you realize, oh, I feel like I'm not being professional. Oh, and then another worry tied to that is I'm not going to have clients and then I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. And okay, that's so funny. This, that's totally me. Mm-hmm. I go zero to 100. 100%. And okay, so, how do I fix it? Well, hold on. So, so I, I want to know now. I know, but this you you say you need to know the science. <clears throat> it's, this is the science. You okay. need to know why you're having those thoughts in the first place and what those thoughts are. So tomorrow, when you get stressed about your email, you can then go to that other thought of like, I'm not going to lose my house because I'm not paying my bills. It's like... That thought of you not getting your emails automatically takes you to this irrational fear of now I'm mm-hmm. not going to be able to pay my bills and have my house. Do you, you know can. what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So what you do about that is you set, I guess, boundaries or you set up systems. I like to talk about systems. So number one, my favorite system I just told you about, do not disturb. I family. don't do that at all and it stresses me out. So I need to. You 100% need yeah, to. Yeah, I really do. So, I mean, this is a whole other podcast that we could talk about is healthy work relationships that is a good one we should should talk about that but in terms of this and going back to stress eating we'll talk about that other stuff later but for stress eating it's really important to understand when you're feeling certain emotions and being mindful of it so that you don't mindlessly go grab food as your coping mechanism okay so what you said what can I do about that again that's a whole other podcast about the email thing specifically but being mindful about what you're feeling, not grabbing food, and having other coping strategies instead of food. So that okay. could be talking to somebody. It could be doing a relax. So for me, it's going to be venting to Devin. It's going to be putting my phone on do not disturb. It's going to be taking a bath. Oh, that's my favorite thing to do is like bath with salt, do a little music or a Netflix or something. It also could be a healthy distraction. So for you, that might be taking the dogs on the walk. Mm-hmm. You know, I love walks. Um, there's so many other things, but shutting your computer down, you know, taking those breaks instead of automatically just going and grabbing food. Okay. Yeah. Because that food is that comfort. Well, we think it's that comfort. Correct. Correct. For sure. Um, And sometimes that food will, like in a stressful situation, can push you more into like a physiological issue, like with the cortisol. Um, Because overall, like high levels of cortisol can correlate to blood sugars and insulin resistance, abdominal weight gain, like all it just continues to go. Well, and then when all of those physical things happen, that impacts your mental health. For sure. So I, I tell my clients this all the time, and this sounds, it's whatever. Food is literally the fuel for our body. Mm-hmm. Our, just like your physical body won't function at its highest capacity without food, your mental, like your brain yeah, won't either. a thousand percent. So if you don't have the fuel in your body, you, your brain, so all of your coping skills, all of your le- resiliency levels, all of that isn't even going to work if you aren't fueling yourself properly. Mm-hmm. And if it's mental like health car. isn't there, it totally is. For sure. And honestly, I actually just read some research about um, in, okay, I don't, like I'm going to butcher this a little bit, 
But basically when we're formed, like in utero, like as a fetus, your gut and your brain are Hmm. basically one. And so like our gut is truly our second brain. So like gut health and just like taking Mm -hmm. care of nutrition is so freaking important for Mm -hmm. mental health. Um, Because then, you know, poor mental health leads into poor health behaviors. Yeah. And it, it's all it's yeah. all just a cycle. And then poor health behavior hey, hey. What? <laughs> Am I okay? Well, I, I, I oh my goodness. Okay. okay. Anyways, did we touch on all of the points we wanted to there? I think so. Okay, cool. So you are going to add more protein your day. Literally it, I will pay someone money if they come to me and say that they're eating like too much protein. Like, it's very You're rare. It's not a thing. It's very, very rare for females to eat enough protein. Okay. Well, protein foods just usually aren't your number one go to. God, no. At all. I could absolutely live. I know there's other proteins besides meat, but I'm just saying I could live a life with no meat. For sure. I definitely think I could too. I think just like spicing it up, like with smoothies and like yogurt bowls, acai bowls, like peanut like, butter and all that stuff, right? I mean, no. Oh. I would consider peanut butter a fat food. It technically is okay. a fat food. There is some protein in it for sure, but if I were putting it in a category, it would be fat. Okay. Well, so is it just meat then? No. Okay. Well, I guess like eggs. Yeah. So animal products. So meat, dairy, eggs. Okay. I could literally go actually without any. Is that vegan? If you don't have any animal products? Animal, yeah. Interesting. But that's, vegan is, like, even, like, well, yeah, honey. Well, yeah, like, I like, oh, I love honey. Like, anything that basically affects an animal, like, mm-hmm. comes from, the, like, it doesn't have to kill them just to. True, true, true. But I guess, like, like, a cake has eggs in it. Yes. <laughs> so, like, I like cake. Uh-huh. So, like. I so, be, you'd be vegetarian. My point is, like, I, I very rarely eat meat. It's just not my thing. It's just, so, that's why I recommended you a multivitamin. Because women need. I know. Meat sources. Really good vitamins and I don't eat it. I'm just saying it's not my... Also, I'm going to be honest with you. It's pure laziness because we live in an apartment and cooking meat in an apartment is very difficult. Why? Because, well, first of all, like, for it to taste the best... Your kitchen is the same as me. Yeah, but like... Well, I'm thinking more like grilled. So like, you know, like grilled chicken or like going outside and like grilling. Get a little George Foreman. I have it, but then it makes the apartment smell Are you joking? You have one? It's a really tiny one that you just, like, smush it. But then it makes the apartment smell bad, and the whole apartment smells like stupid chicken. Sounds like excuses. No, it sounds like I need a bigger house is the solution. (laughs) Isn't it always? Um, Okay, next. Well, we kind of touched on making sure you eat regular meals. So bullet point one, choose high-protein, healthy fats, and veggies all in one. Um, Just make your meals really well-rounded. A lot of different color. What? I want to say something. I forgot to say this today, and I remembered... The important thing with this, so on the behavioral side of things, you've got to create, I, I say this all the time, but you've got to create systems for yourself that makes this sort of stuff easy. For sure. So it's like, I, I really wish I would have said this earlier and I forgot, but let's go back. Okay. So when, you, I mean earlier at the workshop, not earlier as in five minutes ago. No, I know. Oh, okay. Yeah, we need to go back and bring them all back and tell them this Everyone, come back. So... Anytime we're like, so you're like, you need to be eating more regular meals, like do all these things, blah, blah, blah. It's not going to happen if you don't put a system in place. Like that's no. human behavior. To be completely honest, human behavior, we need things easy. We need them consistent oh, sure. and we need routines. I guess that's consistency is routines, but we need them easy mm-hmm. and we need it to be, you know, a system that's literally human behavior. And so I think like when it comes to any of this type of stuff, anything we're saying at all on this podcast, you have to... Make it as easy as possible easy. for yourself. Easy Set peasy. yourself up for success to where you don't have another mm-hmm. option. Yes. And that's why I say, like, people will be like, how do you prep meals and all this? And, like, a we, we don't. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. a big cook at all. But just choose one or two protein sources. Like, when you go to the grocery store, don't go crazy. Right. If you want ground turkey. Turkey. Oh, my goodness. I cannot <laughs> talk. One ground crazy. turkey. Just make it. We usually put, like, a like a Mexican taco seasoning on it and put it in a separate container. You can make tacos. You can make a breakfast enchilada wrap. You can do a taco salad. You could do a wrap. Like don't have it. Like don't feel like you have to plan out these super elaborate meals. Just make sure you have a protein source. Like that's literally all I'm asking. Well, and like for me, so the whole, like, I guess snacking thing or 
get making sure I'm eating enough, I will actually bring snacks into my office. Yes. Because make this, it easy. This sounds so lazy, but like honestly, whatever. Me getting up from my desk and going to the kitchen is not likely to happen because I get so in the zone. I'm yeah. working hard. I know it's, I know we still need to get up and walk around, but my yeah, point is I was going like, to say, set a timer, step away. I do. But the point <laughs> is like, make it easy for yourself. It's yeah. better to at least eat that than nothing at all. For sure. And so that's just a system. Like yeah. create Have your systems. snack prepared waiting mm-hmm. in the fridge. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And have it ready to go. Yeah. Because one thing that we talk about with emotional eating is no distractions, Kelly. We're not eating my lunch. A snacks, I mean, your but brain you needs still, to calm down. But you can still eat a snack at your desk, not your full lunch. We talked about getting up and taking a lunch break, which that's also another thing I really recommend or I think is important is eating your lunch in a separate space. A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. And how many people sit at their desk, get and more eat work their done? Lunch. Yeah. Yeah. You got to get up, got to get up, got to get out. Mm hmm. Um, and how like food is digested. Um, one thing that we were talking about is like research shows, like with a blood sugar monitor, if you eat and just continue to sit versus eating Mm -hmm. that same exact meal and getting up and taking like literally a three to five minute walk, like that could seriously be to the long, the far bathroom from your desk or just getting up, going, say hi to a coworker, going out to your car, whatever, yeah. significantly helps your blood sugar. And remember, blood sugars are tied to cortisol. They both really react to each other positively and, neg- you know, negatively. Um, but that is, that's huge. So even if you're like, I have no idea where to start, take a walk after meal. Love that. For sure. Alrighty, we're just gonna keep on, keep on running. Uh, um, what is that? Wait. I know the song. Keep on running <clears throat> till I reach the higher ground. That's no, song. wait. Huh? Yeah, that's a song. It's a rock song. I know. Okay, keep going. Till I reach the higher ground. Oh, I that's know. the words. Mm-hmm. Keep on running. That was. I've been song. watching a lot of The Voice in American Idol, and I just feel like in my core I was meant to be I don't think so. a singer. I don't think so. I was meant to be a singer's wife. <laughs> That's funny. I want to be Caitlin Brown. Yeah, she's great. She's literal perfection, but she's beautiful. moving on. Number three for me. Are we even talking no. about your stuff? Yeah. yeah number I, three. Well, I jumped in. Why did you just say no? I didn't know what the three meant, to be honest. Number three. We're on topic number three. Oh, okay. Okay. Do you want me, do you want to ask a question about it and make it more conversational? Yeah, sure. I don't even remember what topic three was. Guess. I, tips and tricks. Well, that's not even a... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I gotta be honest. I kind of zoned out when you were Kelly! Talking. Like, stop. It was... Oh, stop. God. Well, that's, it's science. Okay. Watch caffeine. Intake. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I want to say something about this really quick. And I said this earlier, but we, I think a lot of people use coffee or maybe this coffee is just an example, but I think there's other it's a placebo. People, well, never, well, hundred yeah. percent. I think there are some placebo things. Well, the thing with Starbucks, this is a whole thing. The thing with Starbucks is the reason why Starbucks does so well is they have marketed themselves as like people who drink Starbucks are successful. Yeah, for sure. And so when you are drinking Starbucks, I feel you cool. feel, yes. You feel cool, you feel, feel rich, cool. you feel... Also, you know it's not cheap, so the no. fact that you are buying it makes you feel some sort of way. Mm-hmm. It's not good. It's not, like... I, I think there are some parts of it that maybe could be motivating and, like, make you feel good, and I like that, but I like also Like, something think, about sitting down at a clean desk with yeah. a Starbucks really yeah. gets you going. And it does, and it does, but I think that gets people in trouble when you feel like you have yeah. to have Starbucks. So my point is... I feel like sometimes we use food in general, but Starbucks specifically, like the Starbucks brand, as rewards or, well, yeah, as rewards. So saying like, man, I've had this horrible day today. I deserve a Starbucks because I've just had this horrible day. Or the opposite, like today was freaking awesome. I did this really cool thing. I'm going to reward myself with Starbucks. Wait, so you're saying that's bad? I think it's bad if you have an unhealthy, anything is bad if you have an unhealthy relationship with it. Yeah. Like, like I, if you feel like you need Starbucks, you're saying, or coffee. Yeah. 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 
I started buying decaf because there were some times during the winter where I just wanted that cozy afternoon, mm-hmm. but I do not need caffeine in the afternoon. Yeah. Even if my mind is telling me I do, I know, well, that's the, I know that I do not. That's the problem because it tastes good. The I flavor love is good. coffee. Oh, and, and it's like taste. we don't always need the caffeine in it. It's delightful. Mm-hmm. But then I just heard and read a little bit, I swear there's so much stuff out there that I can't keep up, that apparently the process of making it decaf is like very oxidative like it's Mm -hmm. not good for us like get freaking wind around here i know anyways so caffeine we have to watch our caffeine intake Mm -hmm. and i know those people out there that are saying caffeine doesn't affect me and i can drink caffeine and go to bed Mm -hmm. that's not the point okay it's still affecting your cortisol and that that is what we need to watch it's not always about how like how it affects your energy levels it's what's actually happening for sure for sure And especially if you are an anxious or mentally stressed person already, the caffeine is only going to raise your cortisol levels even higher. And um, I was reading through a research study that I added, even if you are a regular caffeine user and your caffeine um, doesn't like push your cortisol throughout the day higher, you still will get a cortisol surge. And if you've followed me on anything and you've ever seen me um, like go over a Dutch test, You'll see, um, or I should go over a Dutch test on a podcast. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. Okay. I'll, I'll do that. Um, but basically, when you wake up, um, your cortisol should spike. It gets you going. It gets, you know, you're awake. The mm-hmm. sun hits your eyes. It's great, right? Your body needs to wake up from rest. Cortisol spikes. But then cortisol should trickle by within an hour, basically, of you waking. And then literally the rest of the day, it should kind of trickle off, like, literally, like, low. So that by the time you go to bed, it's super super low um where a lot of women in general just people in general their cortisol is significantly high throughout the day Mm -hmm. just kind of runs just kind of runs or i've seen some tests where it spikes around that three four five period and a lot of times it's parents picking their kids up or going home whoa yeah picking their kids up um like needing to run errands or going home after work because they know the dishes the kids the yeah, it was really. I was like, Wait, so is that a natural increase in cortisol, or you're saying be. these moms are drinking coffee to pick their kids up from school? No, it can be a natural oh, increase. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So what can they do in the afternoon to help level that out? A walk before they pick them up, um, stepping away from you know work and de-stressing, um, having a snack, helping blood sugars, all of yeah. that. Definitely not going for a caffeine then, because that's just gonna catapult. So. Um, So this study basically showed, of course, if you're not used to caffeine and you have caffeine, it will 100% raise your cortisol throughout the day. But even if you are a regular caffeine user, when you have um, caffeine, you will see a cortisol spike, which is where we kind of get that revving, Mm -hmm. that drive, you know, all of that. Um, And even if you have one later in the day, you'll get a re-spike. So... Just something to note. So Have you ever seen... I literally just thought about this. Have you ever seen that... There's like this picture going around. It's like a study. They It's really creepy, but they injected spiders yeah. with different types of drugs and mm-hmm. caffeine was one of them. Most chaotic. Yeah. yeah. The, the spider's web was the worst on caffeine. It was even better on like LSD and mm-hmm. some of those things. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah, caffeine's crazy. I, I love it. But... I know. I love it, but I it's so bad. It's so good and so bad. I know. I need to figure out how to like create a, a fizzy drink that... Gets you going a little bit, but it doesn't raise your cortisol. Okay. No one take that idea. Yeah, maybe you should edit that out. I'm just kidding. Edit that out. Trademarked. All right. Anything to say with caffeine? That's pretty clean and simple. Yeah. I, the, Cut the caffeine. The part about stress is really important. When I first meet with clients and we go through kind of all the things and we talk about what they're experiencing... That's one thing we talk about, especially, so here's another part of this too. You mentioned the mornings and this is something really important to mention. A lot of people um, wake up with morning anxiety and a reason like on a, I always say on a biological level, what's it called? Physiological. On a physiological. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, sure. On a biological level, um, you know, you're sleeping and your hormones and everything is, is doing its own thing at night, whatever. Oh. And then you wake up and your body needs to readjust to mm-hmm. being awake. You know, your, your body's in different states. And 
when you first wake up in the morning, sometimes it's hard for some people to, their bodies to regulate everything first thing in the morning. Mm-hmm. So I hear all the time about morning anxiety and I struggle with it myself. Yeah, sometimes I, I wake too. up, I just wake up anxious sometimes, no rhyme or reason. And I, I just remind myself like, Kelly, it's your body regulating. I don't know. But, but my point is if you are already someone who's waking up anxious, feeling all the feels, Caffeine is not going to help. It's only going to heighten it. Yeah. Yeah. Only Taking time to, and I know <sighs> easier said than done. I don't have kids. I don't, you know, I'm not rushing out to um, an office or anything like that. So I totally get that. But when you wake up, it really should not be like zero to a hundred. Correct. Like you should allow your body to wake up, take deep breaths, a, a few minutes stretch, like just drink water. Breathe. Oh gosh. Water, That's water, water before. You should do. Nothing should hit your stomach first besides water. Yeah. A thousand percent. Caffeine on an empty stomach spikes cortisol like no other. It's crazy. And then the crash is going to be bigger. Oh, so bad. You want to go get an energy drink? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm tired. Let's go get it. Just kidding. Okay. Um, anything you want to add in so no. far? Okay, we're still on my part. Well, I'll keep this well, moving. Well, I'm, I'm jumping in. Yeah, my yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're good. Oh, this perfectly leads. Hydrate. Love it. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Super easy to forget to hydrate. This is literally one of the number one things I work on with my clients. And, you know, people say like, oh, I don't need water as my goal. Like, I'll just slowly add that in. Like, no, 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 no. We are going to make it a habit. We're going to, like, your body will regulate whatever you give it. So if you're not used to drinking water, your body will not give off the thirst, the the Mm -hmm. craving of water. You have to literally teach it to, to do that. Like, if I don't have my water bottle, I am literally a fish. I know. Out, like dying. I drink a whole, I, I have anywhere from like three to eight sessions a day. That's, that's a lot of talking. Yeah, a lot is of, a lot of talking. A lot of mental energy, a lot of all the oh, things. Oh gosh, I know that is. I know. Can you imagine sitting and talking for eight hours straight? I guess that's what teachers I mean, I think do. a lot of people do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. I personally anyway, do not, but. But I have my water with me. I pretty much drink a whole bottle of water in each session. Yeah. And it's funny because yeah. uh, modeling, this is parents out there, you know all about this. When you model it for some, we are creatures of, I was going to say creatures of habit, that's the saying, but mm-hmm. we also are creatures of like, we pick up on other people's things. And so like if you were, this is actually really funny. We should, we could do another podcast about this. If you are sitting there playing with your necklace the whole time we're sitting here talking, yeah, I'm very likely to start playing with my necklace. Oh, if I have necklace. that's funny. Because I'm observing you. I'm, it's just kind of like, there's, there's a word for it. Honestly, I don't know what it's called. Well, that's why I like YouTube so much. Cause I will watch it and feel yeah. inspired or like, I will be like, yes, I can do this. Whether yeah. it's someone really, you know, good in their fitness or like health or business or whatever. Like I like watching those type of people cause it makes me feel like I can do it. It makes me feel yeah. like I'm capable. But a little bit about that, I guess, is when I'm in my sessions and I'm drinking, and my clients have literally told me they did this. Mm-hmm. They will make I'm them drink. drink. Yes. Yeah. Me drinking my water every like couple minutes Mine's or whatever. Done. They, and it's funny because I'll take mine and then I see them grab mm-hmm. theirs. And yeah. Drink theirs. It's really cool. Well, that's what um, one of my clients we were working on, she was like, if I have the water filled, I will chug that thing. Yeah. But the f- act of getting up and going to fill my water bottle yeah. is, is so hard. Yeah. So, you know, making sure maybe you have a bigger water bottle maybe you fill up two at a time we mm-hmm. one thing that we did was fill it the night before and have it you know ready to go systems yeah these are systems so anyways hydrate and supplement i um really dive into this i don't know if i talked about this on podcast anymore um or yet um but our adrenals so your adrenals are what creates and produce cortisol and a pre-hormone for all of our sex hormones so girls adrenal health is extremely important um, and our adrenals are super sensitive to, I mean, hydrate of course is in this, but, um, micronutrients. So if you do not have a diet super significant in micronutrients, a bunch of different colors, a bunch of different fruits, veggies, whole grains, like plethora, plethora. um, plethora. highly recommend a multivitamin. I know I'm say it a thousand times again, but if we do not have support, cortisol will be all over the place, either high or low. Um, and then when I did my testing, I, I know I was drinking too much water versus, um, my electrolytes. So like I would work out and then I, I mean, I chug for sure way over a gallon, not chug, but Mm -hmm. I drink over a gallon a day. 
and my cortisol was completely shot, which yes, that had to do with overtraining, um, probably was under eating stress with work, all the things, but supporting my adrenals with some electrolytes and micronutrients that I didn't have before, I feel a significant difference. Like it's huge how much energy I have. Yeah. Um, so really, really make sure that those micronutrients are in line. And I feel like we kind of forget about micronutrients because it's all about your macros and protein and all on the label. You only look at maybe carbs or something like that, but the micronutrients are just as important, if not more. I love that. I have nothing to say about that. I have nothing to say. I'm over it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Sometimes I really recommend if I see a cortisol test where they're um, crashing in the afternoon, sometimes I will recommend a um, B complex because B complex is really, really good for adrenal health. Do you feel that sun coming in? Yeah, I do. It's fantastic. My dopamine just shot up. What time is it? Oh, wow. It's 630 and it's this light out. I know. Why is it? I know. Sunset's at 730 now. So I've been trying to do walks at sunset. It's beautiful. Because this is one thing that I'm trying to do. Is, that is so bright. I know. I can't sit in this wow. office um, when the sun comes through because then I get really hot and I start <laughs> to sweat. <laughs> like if I have a late afternoon consult, oh my gosh, I'm sweating. My booty cheeks are sweating just now. Oh my God. We have this thing called air conditioning. Yeah, and I don't fans. have a fan in here. No, you don't. You can put one in though. It is your house. You're allowed to bring yeah. all the things. Yeah, I do need a fan in here. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know. Oh, I've been trying to do a walk at sunset because I am romanticizing the Midwest. That's my new I thing. I saw you said, I, I genuinely hope that works for you. I don't mean that sarcastically. I really hope that works. Well, it ha- I mean, it has to or I'm depressed every day. There's no alternative. I know. Mine is just moving. I know you can't, but. No, I, I mean, I can. That's my solution. I'm going to. The Midwest is but, telling me. Yeah. But if I can enjoy the sun rise sunset and you moved your gym to the garage. I moved my gym to the garage and that was delightful no you know I will say though I sound like a making whatever, the best of the situation no, 100%, I totally like I think I tell people this all the time especially like I mean moving is a big thing that's not something that you can just thing. do like it's whatever I absolutely think making the best out of every situation make lemons out of lemonade no What the? You said make lemons out of lemonade. <laughs> I'm not. Okay. What? Okay, you know what I meant. Make yeah. lemonade out of lemonade. All right, I have one more point. Okay, what? Okay, since cortisol and blood sugars are so highly um, tied together, make sure you have plenty of fiber, whole grain sources, and um, you don't necessarily have to, like, stop eating carbs at a certain time. Like, obviously, don't eat mm-hmm. them right before you go to bed because... Our body doesn't need to be in digestive mode. It should be in rest mode. So I definitely don't like recommend people to eat, you know, within an hour or two for sure before bed. But that's not because of that, like, oh, don't eat past whatever because you'll gain weight. No, that's false. Like, that's so false. Um, But we don't necessarily want to be full digestion, digestion mode. But having a really good quality whole grain source at each meal um, and with that dinner, like having a really good starchy veggie um, can actually really help cortisol levels overnight and promote better sleep. Love that. And sleep is so, so important for your mental health. So important. So I, I actually always say this Sleep too. is number Food. one. Like, yeah, so... Okay, it's so funny. When I'm first meeting with a client, you know, and they're telling me I'm really stressed, I'm overwhelmed, you know, all of these things. Those are valid things. Those are, Or they struggle with overthinking. They struggle with, like, really behavioral kind of things in mental health. We, I always ask, what is your sleep like and what are your, what's your nutrition like? Mm-hmm. Because both of those things, without good quality sleep and without fueling your body... Ain't gonna happen. No, you're not... You literally don't have the fuel to be able to run the machine. It's like I don't, your machine. body is the machine. You do not have this. And it's funny because like I will talk with clients about like, hey, how have we been doing on our thought strategies this week? Or how have we been doing on our, you know, mindfulness or whatever? And they're like, oh, it's not very great. I'm like, okay, how is your sleep and your nutrition? Oh, yeah. that's not very great. Well, it makes sense. Yeah. Like you're, you, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like oil for a machine. The machine is not going to work without, yeah. you know, oiling has it up to. or whatever. Has to, has to. Um, okay, just a quick little list. I have snacks to help cortisol levels. 
Um, number one, fruits and veggies high in vitamin C, like citrus or peppers. Um, vitamin C can curb stress hormones and strengthen the immune system. Another one is walnuts, which are high in omega-3 fats. Walnuts can reduce stress hormones and improve depression in, while helping you feel very full. Uh, raw carrots and celery. Um, oh, this one was actually really cool. Many of us unknowingly hold tension in our facial muscles. The physical... Yes. Yeah, I should I have said this. that. Um, the physical act of chewing on crunchy foods can release tension in your jaw and relax your face. Um, I should is, do that. No, this is... Do you know there's... I'm not going to do it because... Oh, the facial massage thing? Yeah. No, it's so good. No, it's we, cool, but I don't We hold it. tension. So, have, do you know those jade roller things? Yeah. I literally just told a client about this this week. The jade roller things, they're... They have many benefits, but on the mental health side of things, we hold a lot of tension in this part, like right here, of our jaws. Yeah. And so can you hear my dogs right? Yes, I can hear them. They're really wild and crazy. <laughs> um, but so if you use the jade roller, it releases some of that tension, and then also underneath here, these are like oh, different yeah, like pressure pushing. points, and we hold. Um, another really quick note about that: pay attention to where you rest your tongue. So for me, and I notice this all the time, when I am stressed or anxious about something, or if I just am go, 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 working hard on something, my uh, mouth is clenched and my tongue is at the top. Oh, that's funny. And so anytime you're doing any type of relaxation, mindfulness, the first thing you need to do is relax your eyebrows because... (laughs) Jared, can you get the dog? (laughs) Okay. I will text him. Um, but <laughs> this is just real life. Hi, welcome to the Authentic Hi. Health Podcast. Get the dogs. I just texted Jared, get the dogs. Um, yeah, that's real life right there. But no, so anytime you're doing relaxation. <laughs> Should I just get really close to the microphone? If your name is Stark, please be quiet. Oh, he did. Good okay. boy. No, that was good. Okay. He's going to be loud in five seconds. Yeah, probably. I'm okay, can this. you keep going? I'm trying. Your dogs are a lot. You need to relax your eyebrows, and you need to bring your tongue down from the roof of your mouth. Uh, I also um, heard that breathing through your nose is much better than your mouth. Yeah, so... So tape your mouth shut if you're a mouth breather. Yeah, 100%. But also, okay, I'm a nose breather. Doing, you go in through your nose because what you're so you're going in through your nose you can take in this amount of oxygen but when you're breathing out you can release this amount and what you're doing is you're releasing i always say carbon monoxide toxin <laughs> no carbon, carbon dioxide. dioxide there we go um, okay so good um out. okay that was um peppermint herbal tea mint acts as a muscle relaxant and pain reliever i'm gonna make some tonight um, yogurt, yogurt is rich in probiotics, which suppress your appetite, increase your body's feel good hormones and nourish your gut microbiome. We love good gut health. That was loud. Um, okay. We'll just keep going. Okay. There's more, but okay. That's it. Oh, so some just quick tips. I have no idea how long this podcast is right now. Step away from your computer. Allow your brain to calm down and reduce cortisol before eating. That's one. Two, make sure you have all of the macronutrients, a good healthy blend of all of them, carbs, fats, and proteins. Oh, I should have quizzed you. Oh, um, yeah. I wouldn't have. I would have failed everyone. Really? 150 You don't remember the macronutrients? Oh, I thought that's what you were. Never mind. Um, number three, take a small walk after eating. Mm-hmm. Um, four, put away distractions. Don't eat with your phone in your hand, talking, things like that. Take time to sit and enjoy your food. Savor it. Think of it. Mm-hmm. Taste it. Smell it. All the things. Mindful eating. Mindful eating. If you're full, it's okay. If you're still hungry, it's good. Go get another. Like, you don't need to finish your plate. And if you do and you want some more, great. Cool. Clean plate club is a no-no. Yeah. That's that's dumb. So dumb. But if you eat your plate, that's okay. Well, no, but like the clean, so the clean plate club is you like can't you have to get, eat. you can't yeah. get up and do Yeah, don't do that. Don't do so that. So bad. So bad. And then also make sure you plan out a sweet or fun food to add in. It's okay to have a bar of chocolate, like the little, you know, yeah. whatever. Add it into your meals, and then it's not, like, an off-limits, or you don't feel like you need to, like, mindlessly eat it later. Like, just enjoy it. hmm Okay, I think That's I'm done. That's mindful eating. Well, yeah, so, I mean, I think I know what... Give me that. Okay. I think I know... Or I, I've said majority of, honestly, what I need to say, but... Are, are we at, like, feeling three this hours? is really long. What time is it? Well, I don't know what time we started. Okay, give us, give us a rundown of the mental. Well, so, all, really, I need to add, I guess, is... Well, I can just really quickly go through the steps. Step one, identify your comfort foods. So okay. really think about what are the foods that you go to and you grab just mindlessly. That's the biggest thing here is... It's like knowing my- if you're grabbing it, 
it could be my, like, it's probably my life. Yeah, so, well, I think, like, this is with anything. I tell people to live intentionally. Like, everything you do, like, be, be mindful, be present, be intentional, like, all the things. And so, like, if, if you don't even know what your comfort foods are, then you're not even aware of, yeah. like, getting them. Yeah. So, think about what your comfort foods are. It's okay to have them. It's okay to eat them. But ideally, the next time you go and grab it, you'll think, okay, am I just emotional eating? Am mm-hmm. I mindlessly eating? Or do I really need this and want this, I guess? Um, so, and then the other thing is, and I, I already kind of talked through this with you at the beginning part, but label your emotions. So like, figure out what are you feeling? Am I feeling stressed? Am I feeling overwhelmed? Whatever. And then do the why activity. Figure out why you're feeling that. Get to the root core of that feeling the belief the thought whatever um step three think of your coping skills think of a different coping skill you can use to uh work through or process that emotion and that feeling without using food as the mechanism coping mechanism um and then see uh you need to anytime you implement anything <laughs> are you looking at the dog you're like see ah uh, yeah <laughs> anytime you implement anything new you need to be evaluating it and reevaluating it and making sure that your the coping skills that you have the systems of support your healthy behaviors make sure all of those are working and if they're not reevaluate and try something else and ideally you are being so mindful about what you are eating what it tastes like what it smells like what it feels like you also are paying attention to your body and understanding, am I full? Am I just stressed and I'm grabbing something? Mm -hmm. Am I bored and I just need something to do? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is yes to those things, try other things that aren't food. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I do actually have a list of questions really quick I can go through, and then that's really it. Oh, well, I'll talk about that. So questions to know, am I... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Questions to know, am I really hungry or am I stress eating? Number one, when was the last time I ate? Did you want to talk about that because you made it? Yeah, point? like um, especially if you're used to chronically under eating, your body's not going to give off that hunger hormone or that hungry feeling. And so you have to start incorporating a healthy amount of food for your body to be nourished to allow those hormones to start regulating properly. So sometimes, like I know you've said this, like why would I eat if I'm not hungry? That could be because your body's suppressing, chronically stressed, all of the things. So when you say this question to yourself, am I actually hungry? Ask yourself, when is the last time you ate? If it's more, I always say four hours, that's just a clean cut. Like if it's less than four hours and you had a snack or a meal, maybe you're really not phys- like physically mm-hmm. hungry. Um, if it's longer, you probably are physically hungry. Mm-hmm. And if you're not physically hungry, then that's probably something suppressing it. Our body does not need mm-hmm. to go more than, you know, four or five hours um, without eating during the day if you're active. Um yeah. Well, and I think the emotional side of that, though, too, is, like, I use this example, and I, I know, I've done it before, and I know people do this, you know, you finish your meal, and then you're like, okay, what's next? Like, yeah. I'm bored now, so I need a dessert, or mm-hmm. I need a little snack to just keep me busy, or, and you don't. I mean, mm-hmm. if, if you're full, you've actually eaten the meal you need, and you're full, you don't need something mm-hmm. else to just pass the time or to keep you busy. Yeah. That's, that's not... That's kind of the behavioral side of that. Yeah. Um, some of the other questions to ask yourself, what does my body feel like right now? So that's like really kind of honing in on yourself and thinking, is my is my stomach, ha- does my stomach have that physical feeling of I am hungry? Mm-hmm. Like is my body physically telling me I am hungry or am I feeling butterflies in my stomach that tell me I'm nervous or am mm-hmm. I feeling, do I have a headache even? Because that means a whole, mi- whole other mm-hmm. thing, but Um, really understanding what your body feels like and what it means, what it actually means. This question I love, do I need nurturing or nourishment? So nurturing refers more to like, do I need a hug? (laughs) Do I need support? Do I need to practice some of my coping skills? Do I need to move? um, This morning I needed to work out. I was so stressed. And, but moving it, like any type of exercise is a form of like, you know, your self care, your, um, all of that type of stuff. Um, and then, or nourishment, so nourishment is fuel for your body, is food. Yeah. Um, so what do I actually need? Do I need nurturing or nourishment? Yeah. Couple questions. How will I feel after eating this, or how will I feel if I don't eat this? Um, and that, that fifth question, I just now thought about this. That's more for me, be, like people like me who don't eat yeah. enough, and I literally wish I would have said this at the workshop, but 
how will I feel if I don't eat this? For someone like me who struggles with under eating, I'm going to feel like crap. Yeah. Like I need to And it's to just going to push you more into stress and anxiety. Correct. correct. Like I'm, I actually need to be eating something. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if the word this is referring to a bag of chips or if it's referring to, yeah. like obviously I need to be eating proper food, but like these questions are really important to think about, okay, how will I feel if I eat this? And then also how will I feel if I'm not, if I don't eat this yeah. and really thinking about that. Mm-hmm. And then the very last question we've talked about, can I try a different coping strategy first? Is mm-hmm. there something else I can do? to kind of make myself feel better Mm -hmm. instead of just going and getting food. Yeah, Yeah, if you don't know how to, like, if you're kind of stuck, like, I don't know if I'm emotional eating, which usually, like, people don't go through these questions. They just automatically go to it. So we're trying to encourage you to... Mindful eat. Mindful and learn your body and all the things. Um, But I'm always going to recommend just getting sunshine and fresh air Mm -hmm. slash a walk. Mm -hmm. And it really can open up what what you need because after that you'll either have a clearer mind Mm. stress will calm down and then you'll actually know okay I am physically hungry like my stomach's growling or like whatever um or you'll know if it was just mental stress Mm -hmm. very last thing is just mindful eating and what it is so the purpose of mindful eating is to basically uh create a great greater awareness of what we are actually eating what it tastes like what Mm -hmm. it feels like all those things Um, And the idea is when you are more aware of the eating process, number one, it builds a healthier relationship with food. 100%. That's a whole other thing. Um, Having a healthy relationship with food is obviously very important. But then when you are more mindful of the eating experience, you can stop your, you can prevent yourself from all the, like, uh, what's the word? Not being, oh, blind, like blind eating. What is that called? Huh? What are you trying to like say? Like when you're not aware of what you're eating. Mindless, I guess. Yeah. Mindless eating. Yeah. I don't know why that word was very hard yeah. for me. But yeah, so it's just, it's really important to be like, and think about how many times people, I know this is like so common. Think about how many times you sit down and you eat a meal. You don't remember mm-hmm. a single second. You don't enjoy it. it. Yeah. It's like, I don't even remember eating that. Mm-hmm. What it tasted like, yeah. like the enjoyment. Yeah. It did I enjoy it? I don't mm-hmm. know. I just scarfed it down and then went and did my next thing. Mm-hmm. Or you just ate it because it was there. Like, have you ever gotten a side at a restaurant where you're like, meh, it's okay, but you eat it because yeah. it's there? Yeah. Like, why? Yes. Yeah. So bad. That's it. Okay. Anything else to say? Um, mental health is important. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think No, we... I think just wrapping up, though, I think... It's important to recognize the connection between physical and mental health. Hundred percent is a cycle, and it never ends. And it's you mm-hmm. have to you have to focus on both. Yep, can't focus on just one. Correct at all. No, it's like literally not possible. No. Okay, that was fun. That was fun. Okay, well, I think we just came up with like ten other topics. I know. That's fine. That's okay. I got them. Be here next week. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Your support means more than you know. If you enjoyed this episode, I would be so grateful if you could leave a kind review, subscribe to this podcast, as well as share this on your social media with a screenshot. I am blessed to have this opportunity to connect with individuals like you and hopefully bring you some happiness today. You are the reason authentic health is possible. I value all of you so much. If you'd like to get to know me a little bit more, you can find me on Instagram at Lacey underscore Authentic Health, as well as my website listed in the description below. So thank you again. And until the next episode, let's chase our best selves and make it a great day. so much for listening to this episode. Your support means more than you know. If you enjoyed this episode, I would be so grateful if you could leave a kind review, subscribe to this podcast, as well as share this on your social media with a screenshot. I am blessed to have this opportunity to connect with individuals like you and hopefully bring you some happiness today. You are the reason authentic health is possible. I value all of you so much. 
If you'd like to get to know me a little bit more, you can find me on Instagram at Lacey underscore Authentic Health, as well as my website listed in the description below. So thank you again. And until the next episode, let's chase our best selves and make it a great day.